Welcome. It's me, Aaron the Artist. If you're an artist too, then I'm sure you found yourself scrolling through your Instagram feed or flipping through art books and just feeling awful about yourself and your own work. Lots of us just can't help comparing ourselves to others, comparing our work to the work of other people. I know I'm definitely guilty of that on pretty much a daily basis. There's a whole bunch of artists that I admire, who inspire me and push me to try new things. But those same artists also make me hate my own work, make me feel like my work is ugly or unfinished or just not up to the level of quality that I want it to be. I constantly compare myself to them and come out thinking badly about myself. I want to think a bit about the good and the bad of comparing ourselves to other artists. First, let me tell you a little personal story that captures that all pretty perfectly. When I was a kid, maybe 15, 16 years old, there was an artist over on DeviantArt called Pyromaniac. He's not called that anymore. He's called Pyrororo. I'll put some examples of his work up on screen now. Absolutely check him out if you like. He's a fantastic character artist. But anyway, back then he was called Pyromaniac, and I absolutely loved his art. I was obsessed with it. I spent a crazy amount of time copying his pieces and trying to draw characters in the same style. I just desperately wanted my work to be like his. To me, he was kind of a superhero version of an artist. That's how much I looked up to him. Now, of course, this was almost 15 years ago now, and his art is way higher quality now than it was then. I won't show any of his old works here because you can easily find them if you scroll through his social media. Even back then though, I used to think to myself, if I could just make art like that, I'd be happy. If I could just reach that level of quality and that style, I'd be satisfied. I used to look at my work, which was a long way short of what Pyromania could do, and anything that was stylistically different between mine and his, I assumed that mine was the uglier, or, air quotes, the worst. At that time, I put Pyromaniac on a kind of pedestal. He was a special kind of person in my eyes. He was an artist. He had special art powers to make amazing art pieces, powers that I didn't have. Now, I never thought exactly those thoughts. That'd be pretty silly. But looking back on it, that's more or less how I treated him and his work. There's a good and bad side to all of this. The good side is that the comparisons I made were really helpful to me when it came to making very specific improvements to my art. For example, Porororo draws lots of very cute characters, and studying his work allowed me to learn how I could draw my own cute characters using those same kind of proportions. He also uses a lot of cell shading, and I learned a lot from him about how to do cell shading and how to create attractive shadow shapes. Comparing myself to him also gave me a very clear artistic target to shoot at. I knew I wanted my art to look like that, and I could gradually keep refining my work, seeing how it was different to his, refining again, and just keep going like that until I got to the level of quality and style that I wanted for my own work. All of that comparing was great, and very helpful to me. But there's also a dark side to these comparisons too. Burnout, loss of motivation, hopelessness. Those are the kind of things I felt when looking at my work and comparing it with Pyromaniacs. I knew that I was so far away from what he could do that a lot of the time it felt almost pointless to even try to get there. I felt like giving up, constantly. And that's just with one single artist. The reality is that most of us don't just look up to one single artist. With how easy it is to find artists on the internet, I can find myself discovering new incredible artists every single day. And I must have at least 10 artists that I really look up to, and that I still compare myself to. You can easily see how bad it can be for you, both artistically and just in terms of your mental health overall, to keep comparing yourself to other artists who are so many levels above you. Oftentimes, 
the artists that you admire the most are so far above your level that it can be really off-putting. This is especially so when you're just starting to learn how to draw. Comparing yourself to a 20-year art veteran can be so totally demotivating that it just makes you want to throw away all of your art supplies. Part of the reason these comparisons were so bad for me personally was the pedestal I put Pyromaniac on, and which I sometimes put other artists on even today, if I'm not thinking carefully. I have a tendency to see artists that I admire kind of like superheroes. A lot of folks use the phrase art god when describing some of their favourite artists, and I think that kind of gets at the same point. Thinking of our favourite artists this way makes them seem like they have magical powers. I often think of artists I admire as somehow having completely unreachable talents that I just can't measure up to. It's important to remember these people are not superheroes, and they aren't gods. They're just people. People who have put in all of the same hours of practice that you have, and then some. People who have spent long hours doing boring lighting studies, drawing boxes in perspective, and all of that other key fundamental stuff. They're people that use specific methods and tricks to create the pieces that they do. And the only difference between you and them are, first, you don't know what their methods are yet, and two, you haven't put in as much practice yet. Both of those things you can fix with time. Uh, those are th things that I figure are somewhat obvious points to make. But you'd be surprised how easy it is to forget them when you're staring at another totally mind-blowing piece from, for example, Will Up. So we have to remember that the artists we admire aren't gods. We can reach the level of skill of any artist we admire if we put in the work. But you know, the funny thing is, no matter how much skill you gain, it won't actually get rid of that bad feeling that you get about your own art. Again, I used to think that if I could just be as good as Pyromaniac was 15 years ago, if I could just reach that quality, I'd be happy with my art. Sadly, that's not true, because I did eventually reach the same level of quality as Pyromaniac 15 years ago. I did eventually get to the point where I could draw in that style pretty effectively, but I still felt bad about my art. Why? Well, for one thing, in the time it took me to get to that level, Pyromaniac, or Porororo as he's now called, leveled up as well, and his work was still insanely better than mine. Because he'd been working just as hard as me, if not harder. So I hadn't really caught up to him, and that made me feel like I hadn't really gotten anywhere at all. More than that though, in the time it took me to improve, my tastes had also changed. I wasn't that interested in the early pyromaniac style anymore. It was too exaggerated for my tastes. I wanted something completely different now, and I was looking at a completely different set of artists. I was looking at all those new artists and thinking, if my art could just be like that, I'd be happy. And there's the trap of this whole thing. Comparing ourselves to other artists can often make us feel pretty bad about our own work. But you can't escape those feelings by working hard to match the skill or style of the artists that you admire. If you're anything like me, all that happens is you start comparing yourself to new, different artists and you feel bad about that instead. The way out is just not to make those unhealthy comparisons in the first place. In the end, I think that comparing yourself to other artists can be very useful when you do it for specific reasons. If you're doing it trying to learn some specific kind of shading, or to figure out what shapes they use, or, you know, just generally doing it with a productive mindset, it can be a really useful tool. But if you find yourself comparing your work to other artists with no real goal in mind, you're just doing it and feeling rubbish about your own stuff. There's just no point in that, and we have to try as much as possible to avoid that mindset. I'd advise everyone to try and get into the habit of seeing other artists' work as learning opportunities. They aren't there to make you feel bad, but to teach you or inspire you. We need to approach comparing ourselves with other artists, not in terms of 
let's see all of the things that I'm doing wrong, but let's see what I can learn from this. All right, well, before we wrap up, I thought it might be interesting to hear what some of you good folks think, instead of me just talking at you all the time. So I asked the members of my Discord what they thought about our comparison, and here are some of their thoughts. I got a bunch of replies that underscored this idea of comparing your art to others for the sake of studying and improving. For example, Create Ivory wrote, I think it's helpful. It actually helped me improve my art a lot by studying others' art. Specifically, a bunch of folks told me that it can really help them to change their own art to be more like the art that they admire. Duck Duck, Duck 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 said, I usually compare as in, I like those eyes. How can I change mine to be similar to artist A, B, and C? I think this approach is absolutely useful. I frequently use art that I admire to see what I can incorporate into my own work. Here's a slightly contrary thought from Harlequin that I found interesting. I feel a mixture of both. I feel inspired, bad, and impressed all at once, mostly because I know I haven't worked as hard or as long as they have. Harlequin says they feel bad because they know that they haven't worked as hard or as long as the artist has. I do think that a lot of young or beginner artists struggle with this. When you look at an artist who has been working for 25 years and been drawing for, you know, four hours a day every day for all that time, that can be seriously intimidating. Even if you know that, if you pull in all the work, you could make it. The mountain can still seem so impossibly tall that you just don't even know where to start. I think what we have to try to remember is that everybody starts at the bottom of the mountain. Everybody starts bad at heart, and you only get better by making the climb. Of course, that isn't going to be for everybody. Some people are just going to think, it's all too much work. And I understand that. If it's not for you, don't torture yourself with it. Don't do art if it's not your thing. Just go find something else to do. But if you really love art, then it's worth the climb. Moving on to another comment. Alexandra wrote a pretty long and thoughtful reply. I'm going to just focus on a few key bits here, so please forgive me, Alex, for shortening what you've said. Many times I used to feel very inferior to other artists and compared myself to them in a negative light. This led to me being very unsatisfied with my art, and that also often leads to art blocks. So I try to inspire myself not so much with their art as I get inspired with their routine, mentality, or road to get better themselves. I found this such a fantastic response because it nicely captures that mood of really hating your own work and not wanting to carry on in the face of so many other skills artists. But then, I love the advice that Alex offers here. Try and focus not just on what the artist's work looks like at this moment, but instead to be inspired by their overall journey and their mindset. I think if you are able to look at an artist's long journey across many years, to see the development of their work over time, you can really draw a lot more positivity from that, because you can see that their art hasn't always been so amazing and perfect, but you can see the effort and the human heart that has gone into making the artist that you see now. The last comment I wanted to focus on comes from d and again, I'm going to focus just on a few key parts. I know I'm not as good as them, but I know one day I will be if I keep consistently practicing. I should probably add that you need the correct mindset going into it. What I do is go in thinking, this person is much better than me. However, what can I learn from this? What does he or she do that is objectively better than me? And what can I learn from this? It's all about the mindset. There's always going to be a bigger fish than you in the pond, but that doesn't mean you can't be a barracuda. I like this idea of taking a kind of objective approach to comparing your art with others. Don't go into it upsetting yourself about how much better other people are than you. But perhaps we can just objectively compare the two pieces of art and figure out what, exactly, we can do to improve our own work going forward. I do absolutely agree that it's all about mindset when doing these kind of comparisons. If you go in insecure and worried that people are going to be better than you, you're going to have a bad time. But if we can find a way to accept that there's always people better than us, and then we can use that fact to help us learn. I think that's the best way forward. 
that just about brings us to the end of this one. If you want to get involved in future audience feedback, get yourself on over to my Discord. There's a link in the description. I post in there whenever there's a video where you folks can get involved. And otherwise than that, it's a great community to be a part of. And we'd love to have you there. Till next time, if you like this video, please do all of those things for me. And have a nice day.